Good morning, Animation One. Today's Monday, May the 4th. A um, couple things. I want to show you um, a simple thing with, um, with Premiere or with Animate and a new thing with Animate that I think may help some of you guys. It's not really something that we get into until Animation 2, but I thought maybe it'd be helpful for you guys to kind of experiment with uh, now. So here we go. Ready? Uh, oh, before we do that, uh, there's going to be no review and reflect form today. What I prefer you guys do, what I need you guys to do, is to email me directly at panettam at pcsb.org with your progress on the project. Exactly where you are at. Be specific. Don't be vague. Um, screenshots would be helpful to attach to the email. Uh, so, but we need to, like, you know, when there's studio time and you've been in my class all year, I kind of walk around and talk student to student to student. So that's what this is. You know, it's just us kind of like chit chatting about where you're at, what, what troubles you are having, or me giving you kudos and telling you how brilliant you are, you know, those things. So email me today. Okay. Um, a puppet. Now, here is a, an animation, right? And in this animation, I have all these different layers. And notice that I broke them up into folders just to help organize, right? So here, let me close some of this stuff and I labeled them. So to make folders, you just click on this little button right here. And I'm in Photoshop right now, right? So this is only gonna work if you have um, the Adobe suite at home. You know, if you're using other suites, then we'll talk one-on-one -on -one in our email about how you can achieve similar things in your software that you're using. So to create a new group, it's a folder, that's it. And then you just create new layers and then you can drag and drop them into that lay that folder and close it up. So I'm gonna delete that. Yes. So I have Eliza here, right? There's my character and she's one of the characters from my animated show. She's gonna be one of my news anchors. Uh, and I really like the color of the hair and all that other stuff. And if I open up Eliza, notice that I have the head and the body. And inside the head, I have the mouth, I have the right eye and the left eye. Uh, if I go down to the body, I have the legs, the torso, the arms, and I'm putting these all on different layers because I want to be able to animate them separately. So I'm done. Eliza's saved out. It's a Photoshop file with all my layers. And so I'm going to go into animate. And in animate, and like this, this hippo, this is pretty much what we're going to show you today is how do you animate? And this is what this is. It's a puppet. You know, we're going to animate the puppet, right? So I'm going to open up a new project and I'm going to make it uh, 1920 by 1080. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold on a second. Technical issues. It'll do it. It wants to do it. Come on, come on. All right, there we go. So I'm going to fit in the window and I'm going to go to file, import, to library, to stage. And I'm going to go find the Eliza who's right there. And then here's all the different layers. Now it's only selecting the layers that are visible. So I had all these other layers that are unvisible that were just accident layers or whatever. And so I'm only going to check the ones I want to bring in. I'm going to hit import. Notice now in my stage, in my timeline are all those separate layers, right? So I got the body, and I got the head, and I got the mouth. Uh, I can turn them off and on to see. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to extend out my timeline. Now you should extend it out to like 15 or 20 or seconds or whatever, however the length of your, your animation is going to be. But I'm going to extend it out just for two seconds. So oops, select, insert, timeline, and I'm going to add a frame. And that just extends out the frames for that entire two seconds, right? Notice it doesn't do it for the layers that have folders, it's just the layers that are visible. So let's see, there's our lie, right? So in here, now we start animating. So insert timeline, and I'm gonna add a frame. Nope, not a frame, you fool. Insert timeline keyframe. And then maybe I just want the eyes to kind of shift over here to the right, right? So insert timeline keyframe. But here I'm gonna move the eye like right there. And let's add a classic tween there because it's a simple movement. And so that eye then moves, right? And I'm going to do the same thing with the right eye. Where are we at? Is that the right eye? Nope, that's the hair. Where are we at? Over here. What? My goodness. This one. No. 
that? Ah, oh, there it is. Okay, cool. All right. My bad. So, insert, timeline, keyframe. Just do the same thing, same steps. Insert, timeline, keyframe. Move the eye over. Classic tune. Now, these are all things that we've done before. You did the same thing for your animated logo. You've done the same thing, and look. Now she's looking over, right? Now, am I expecting that, like, the hippo that was jumping all over the place and you're in? No. This is an incredibly time-consuming amount of tweens in here. I would never expect you guys to do this, uh, particularly for this project. So even if it's, like, the show intro and this is it, and then I have, like, you know, starring Lizzie or Eliza or wherever over here coming in, like, the kinetic typography, the animated logo you guys did for yourself. Maybe you do something like that for this each character as we're introing them, right? So... I like this. Maybe, you know, I'm also going to change the mouth a little bit. I'm going to also, you know, maybe after she looks over here, insert, timeline, keyframe, and then over here, I'm just going to make a simple, uh, oh, I don't even need to do that because I'm not going to create an animation. I'm just going to move the mouth. Let's see. Maybe I'm going to stretch out the mouth just a touch. I'm going to rotate it just a touch and then move it like almost like she's like kind of smirking. Okay, let's see what it looks like. Well, that's kind of cool. I like that. Simple little animation. Love it. Perfect. Okay, but those are all things that you already know how to do, right? And then you could do the same thing with the arms and the legs or whatever, right? So, but what I want to show you today is this little thing right here, and it's a camera. And a camera is exactly what you think it is. Like in a film, you move the camera around. You're not moving the character around, you're moving the camera around, right? And so I have Eliza smirking right here, right? And so right here, I'm going to add a keyframe. Right there. Insert, timeline, keyframe. Okay? And then I'm going to write... Let's make it really quick. Insert, timeline, another keyframe. On this keyframe, I actually want to be really... No, not just notice when I'm in the camera... If I click and move around, it's not moving the character. I'm moving the camera. I hope that makes sense. It'll make sense here in a second. And so I'm going to zoom in to Eliza here, right? And put her like right there. So that way we do like kind of a close-up of Eliza. Like that. And then by here, I want to be a, a wide shot. Let's say like right there. Okay? Now I go from here to here. And I'm going to animate this. I'm going to create, uh, is it a motion tween? No, no, classic tween. It's a classic tween. Create a classic tween. And all it's going to do is animate. Ooh. There's a shift there. Ooh. Oh, I did it wrong. I did it wrong. Forgive me. Forgive me, people. Forgive me. I'm a fool. All right. So. Sorry, we need to start with where we want the camera to start. I want to start here. I added my keyframe too soon. So, insert. Now that I'm right here with that close-up, insert timeline, add a keyframe. And here, I want insert timeline keyframe. Now I want to back up. I've got it. I've got it. Right? And then in between those, I'm going to add my classic tweet. And that's going to animate the camera moving backward as if to like go. And then maybe I go backward and then the name of that character pops up over here before I then move over to another character, right? And so, so maybe from here, I'm going to zoom into this blue part of her, her hair because um, I'm, you know, my next scene is going to be blue. And so that's kind of cool to zoom in or pink. I'm going to zoom into the pink of her shirt or the blue of her hair. And then the next background is all blue as I introduce another character. So from here, I'm going to add a keyframe. And then right here, insert timeline keyframe. Now let's zoom way in. Way in. And then we're going to speed this up a little bit too. Way in, way in. So you, you see what I'm saying? So the next frame of my animation would be just a blue background and then popping up would be a new character. And this is how I would introduce those characters. So I'm going to insert a classic tween. Uh, let's play. 
Okay, so you see how that, that really good kinetic movement as I'm coming in here? Zoom right into her hair as I introduce the next character. Maybe I think that happens a little fast. I can click here and drag this out. I kind of feel like this one happens a little slow, so I'm gonna click and drag that one in. I kind of like that a little bit better. That's kind of cool. Let's, let's speed him up just a little bit more because I want something a little bit faster pace. And of course, if I had my music in here, I would be syncing these keyframes to the actual beat of the music, right? Right? You know that. You know that. Let's, let's, let's play it again. I think it's kind of cool because you can have this come up here. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. You know what else? Yeah, no, I love it. I think it's great. And so like, so once you're done and you're like, oh, the camera's confusing me. I don't want to see it right now. If you just click camera, it goes away back into your regular layers. And then you can turn it back on later if you want. So consider using the camera to create like more movement, dynamic movement within your animation. And because I'm using a puppet and the puppet's not moving a lot, the camera does a lot of that movement for you, which is kind of a cheat, but it's a good cheat, okay? I hope that's helpful. I hope that's something you can implement into your project. Remember to email me directly with where you're at the rest of the class is studio time. I hope you guys have an amazing day. I hope you had a great weekend. I look forward to seeing all of your amazing work. I look forward to seeing all your emails. Um, may the fourth be with you. Bye.